Hello, Health from Manila Visuals here, and in today's video we're going to be looking at how to layer up shaders inside of Maya. This is something that I get asked all of the time from my students, and actually it's pretty easy. There's just a couple of things that we need to uh, go through in order to get that going on. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm over in Maya here, and we are using Maya 2023 today. The first thing that we need to do is change our preferences, um, change our working units to meters. I'm going to create a plane, so polygon primitives plane, and I will give that a width and height of four meters. And what we're going to do is create a AI layer shader and you can see down here that we got three different um, types of layer um, that we can put in here so we've got float RGBA and shader and they're all um, slightly different I will show you the difference between these okay so we've got float which is um, it's good for mixing uh, grayscale values. If you're doing anything with color and you need to access sort of blending modes, um, then you will want to be using the RGBA. And then when you're using sort of full materials or shaders and you're actually combining those shaders together, then that's when you want to use the, the layer shader. So we're going to be using layer shader today. And you can see here that layer we've got layer one, layer two, and then we've got lots of different layers down here. And the way that it works is that layer one is the bottom layer, layer two is the next layer up, and so on. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but um, we can just demonstrate this by putting in an AI standard surface here. So when we put in our AI standard surface, we can just delete the shading group that's attached to it. And then if we just give this a bright green color, and I will just duplicate this and give this one a bright red color. And then what I'll do is I will enable the second layer on the layer shader, and then I will middle mouse click and drag from my standard surface and drop it on top of this input the word input and as i do that you can see it populates that and i'm just going to apply this layer shader to my object in the scene by middle mouse clicking and dragging and then i will change my viewport to use the arnold renderer and obviously i'm just seeing black because i haven't got a light in my scene so i'm just going to put sky dome light in So you can see here that we've got our, we can see our red color, and that's because that's the one that is on top. So if I uncheck enable, we're now seeing the green one. So that's on the bottom. Um, the, the beauty about this is that we've also got a mix here. So we can slide that mix down and you'll notice that it's mixing or it's becoming, the red's becoming more transparent, so we can see what's underneath. Um, and the cool thing about this is that you can also plug in textures to, to this mix. So if you wanted to mask out the red texture in a certain way, then you can plug in your own textures to this, or you can use, you know, some of Maya's procedural textures. Um, I can just plug a checkerboard in, so the checkerboard is actually masking out the red and revealing the green underneath. So we can use this creatively and um, just for now I'm going to delete that checker pattern. I'm just going to reorganize these things a little bit. Okay. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using an example where we're going to be looking at floorboards. So I'm going to uh, bring in some 
wooden floorboards and I'm going to be using these ones here that I've downloaded from Quixel. You can um, go ahead and download those from Quixel or if you want to go over to Polyhaven um, they also have some textures over on there so um, yeah you can follow along with some textures um, that you have found yourself. Cool. So I'm going to drag in um, my diffuse color to start with. And I will plug this into my standard surface and I will plug it into the color slot. Okay. So we've got our, we've got our color there. And what I'll do is I'll just increase the, the roughness a bit. I could, um, you know, I could bring the other textures in and um, if I wanted to, I might just bring in the displacement um, just to, to give our floorboards a bit of height. Uh, and to get this going on, I just need to create a displacement shader. I can delete the shading group of that. And if I take the displacement and plug that into the displacement over here, and then also I will take the out alpha of my displacement texture. Hang on, I've just noticed I'm using the JPEG, which is a no-no. Let's um, bring in the EXR file for the displacement and take the out alpha into the displacement of the displacement shader. Cool. Um, what I'm also going to do, just on a side note, is change my renderer to use um, my GPU. And then to get this displacement going on, what I will do is I will select it, select my mesh, and then in my shape node, come down to Arnold in the attribute editor, down to displacement, uh, to subdivision, and then I'm going to change the type to use Cat Clark. And this iteration number is how many times these polygons are being divided, essentially. So um, if I start my render again, I'm just going to save this just in case I get a crash somewhere. Okay, so at the moment, I'm just going to go back to the displacement shader and just uncheck auto bump over here and then come back in to my, um, my shape node. And if I, if I change in my render window, not sure if I can see the debug. Yeah, debug shading. If I have a look at the wireframe. Uh, sorry, I'm going a little slow here, but you can see that one iteration is dividing a polygon into four squares. So in order to, to really see our displacement happening, we need much higher resolution than this. So if I increase that to two, you can see we're getting more resolution. And if I just continue to do this, uh, being careful how far I take it. Okay, let's go with let's go with something like five for a minute, and then I'm going back to you know, disable my um, debug shading. And then what I will do is just increase my scale here. So increased my scale. Let's go back to debug shading. Can't see an awful lot going on here. Let's just check. Oh yeah, I think it's because in my displacement, I need to ensure that I have alpha's luminance checked on if I'm coming out of the alpha channel. I just need to make sure alpha's luminance is checked on. And as soon as I do that, it, it will give us what we want. OK, 
Okay, so I can go back to my debug shading. Now I've got a little bit of height information in there, so that's cool. I'm not going to worry too much about the other parameters here because this tutorial is mainly about getting those layers working. So we've got one layer here. And what I thought would be um, a good test would be to maybe try and get a graphic over the top. We could put some, you know, we could paint the floorboards white or something like this. But I thought it would be a good idea if we saw if we could actually um, layer up a graphic. And, you know, what better way to, to promote and their officials then put it onto the floorboards. So, but I'm just using our logo as an example of the workflow. So, you know, you can you could layer up um, anything that you wanted, and, and I'm just using that as an example. So, I'm going to drag in that logo down here, and I've exported it as a TIFF. And I saved the transparency with the TIFF, so I'm hoping that I can get that in. Um, and that's going to work for us. So AI standard surface is my second layer. Uh, so this red one, so I'm going to check that on. At the moment, my mix is 0.5. If I just increase that to one. With the standard surface, what I will do is I will plug in the out color. And I'm going to take that into the color slot over here. And we can see here that it's not looking quite right. Um, and that's because it's not reading the alpha at the moment. And um, we have got the alpha because we exported it as a TIFF. So um, the way that I would be doing this is um, in the layer shader, we have a mix value. And remember that mix controls we can use it as a mask essentially. Um, so I'm going to take the out alpha of the logo and I'm going to plug that into the mix of the layer shader. And you can see now that that's masking that out correctly and, and that's how we exported it out. So we can then now come over to the um, place 2D texture node and if we wanted to, we could you know, decrease the size of this. So 0.5 and 0.5 perhaps. And then we could move this to 0.5. Well, let's try 0.25 to go somewhere in the middle here. Okay, so the, the beauty about this now is that obviously we've got two different shaders. We've got one for the wood and one for the the sort of logo on top we can change the roughness of the logo and that's not that's not changing the roughness of the wood underneath if you found this tutorial useful in any way please like and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our future releases we also have a, a newsletter which i will link in the description below where you can gain access to exclusive downloads and just stay up to date with all things anella cool See you for the next one. Cheers.